So, uh, hey everybody, had a little mic trouble on this one. Sound quality is not going to be up to usual standard. Sorry. I mean, he's only the longest running superhero in comics with the best known origin of any character in the medium. So yeah, of course we should do a new origin. talk comics this time. Been a little bit uh, <laughs> of a while on that. This is a, a Patreon-sponsored review, and I was commissioned to take a look at Superman Birthright. Now, this, uh, as my intro implied, is a retelling of the origin of the Man of Steel. They've got it right there on the cover. Uh, Mark Wade uh, was the writer on this, and for that reason alone, people should realize that I was being a little bit facetious. Because, yeah, Superman doesn't really need his origin retold, or rather didn't need it retold in 2004 when this thing was published. But Mark Wade, at least as much Mark Wade as I've read, I've heard slightly mixed things about his recent output, but as far as the stuff that I've read from him is concerned, I don't think the guy knows how to write a bad comic book script. So, yeah. Even though this is very well-trodden ground, it's really, really well done. The, I think the key thing, and this is something that Mark Wade is very good at, he doesn't reinvent the wheel. He doesn't do this drastic recreation, this major shift to like put his stamp on it. He sticks to the bones and the fundamentals of the story that we all know just brings it up to speed. He did a similar thing with the Fantastic Four kind of around the same time, actually. I, I think, guess a little bit before this, where he just cut down to the core of those characters and produced a great book. And he does the same with the script for this book. So this is an origin. We're covering the um, escape of uh, Superman from Krypton, his, uh, we get mostly flashbacks to his initial raising in Smallville with Mon Pa Kent. In this version, as in some versions, uh, uh, he did actually grow up and know Lex Luthor when they were younger, in about high school age. He gets into, you know, Superman, Clark Kent gets into journalism, moves to Metropolis, starts working for the Daily Planet. The usual stuff occurs, Lex Luthor is there, the two immediately start butting heads, and we're off to the races. Like I said, there's nothing that's a big fundamental change. There's nothing that you would say, oh, that's how he made it different. It is brought up to what was at the time of publication current day. So the flashbacks retroactively take place in the 80s, I guess, 70s, 80s. Um, and the all the stuff set in the present was present for that point in time, the modern day. So he goes to work at the Daily Planet, but it is a combination printed newspaper and website. So there's that acknowledgement of where things were trending and shifting at the time. And Mark Wade has a very good understanding of Clark Kent. And as far as the, uh, the title goes, Birthright, this is a version where he, at least to the memory of things that I've read, where Superman knows the least about his origins. He doesn't know the name of the planet he came from. He doesn't know why he was sent off of it. He cannot speak Kryptonian. He's got basically a tablet of data, but he doesn't speak the language, so he can't understand most of it. He has images and sounds and voices, but he doesn't know who he's looking at, where, how long ago any of this was, what any of it means. So he's lacking a lot of the context. So there's a lot more emphasis on how he was raised by Mon Pa Kent, which is kind of nice because I feel like, especially in more recent times, there's been uh, a lot more emphasis on his alienness. And I feel like this version really puts a lot of emphasis on the way that he was raised and the, the, the homegrown heroism of him. So that's a, that's a really nice touch. 
this Lex Luthor, that what I'm gonna say something that is gonna sound like an insult, but I mean it well. I would not be surprised to find out that Jesse Eisenberg's take on Lex Luthor for Batman v Superman took some inspiration from the version of Lex Luthor we get in this. Now, again, that might, might sound like an insult because that wasn't a very good take on Lex Luthor, but the thing is, reading this basically showed me how that sort of, you know, not big business mogul necessarily, but that sort of snarky tech genius you know, superiority, inferiority, mesh, complex, smartest guy in the room, cannot stand how dumb everyone around him is, kind of interpretation of Lex Luthor could be made to work. I feel like that was the foundation that Jesse Eisenberg was trying to build on. What he created didn't work, though to be fair, almost nothing in that movie really works. But reading this is like, oh! That's how it could have been done to actually function. Okay. And also, this Lu this Lex Luthor is a lot more emotionally volatile. Um, especially in the uh, in the flashbacks that we get to him as a teenager. We get a, a much better sense of sort of how long he's been really pretty dang damaged. And the, the thing that I uh, enjoy about that is that men just do it without turning him into you know, whiny, which was the problem in, say, the recent animated release of Death of Superman, Reign of the Superman, at least problems with that characterization. So it, it's very, that's very well done stuff. Uh, and, and the relationships between everybody at the Daily Planet is a lot of fun. Perry White and, and Lois and Jimmy, it's, the dynamic is, it, it's all built up and it's just the right balance because obviously we know these characters, we know they're going to be close and, and everything. So it would have been easy for Mark Wade to just be like, and he's these here are these characters, you know they're going to get along, let's just pretend like they always have. No, he does take the time to establish how these rapports get built, but also doesn't sink so much time into it where we're going, yeah, we know, we know, we know. He really does a really great job balancing that. Now, for all the praise I've now heaped on this thing, you may have picked up a word I've kept using whenever I say something nice, and that is the word script. Because the art by one uh, Lionel Francis Yu is ugly as hell. The art in this thing is hideous. I cannot think of another comic or graphic novel that I have read with a bigger discrepancy between the quality of the written word, the quality of the script, and the quality of the art. It is just so far off. I've read plenty of stuff with lousy art, but usually it was scripts that weren't that good either, or at best were inoffensive scripts and then the art made it bad. This is a great script that still makes for a good story, but it is dragged from great to good because the art is just hideous. Like, okay, this is the very first image we get of Lois Lane. I wish I was kidding. And before anyone jumps to the idea like, oh, he just can't draw Lois. No, it's not just her. Like this, this is Lex Luthor in one image. Yeah, th this stuff is all over the place. And look, I was around in the early 2000s. I was still picking up comics every now and then at that point. Some of the ugliness of this is indicative of the art style of the time, but even by the standards of some of the stuff that was just the way things were being drawn at that point, I still think this is butt ugly. Even trying to grade on the curve of what the early 2000s art was like. I'm not gonna say there's no good art in it. Every now and then you get a decent hero shot um, of, you know, one of the main characters, but Anything that is not carefully crafted as a primary image, like this is meant to be like the iconic image of Superman flying or Lex Luthor in the shadows or, you know, Superman smashing the car into the thing, like, you know, the cover of the very first book uh, or what have you. Like, if it's not that, it's just unappealing and 
ugly. I keep coming back to that word. The art is really ugly. And also, at times, difficult to follow. That is less of a problem than just the inherent hideousness of it. But uh, there are definitely times where I was like, I'm sorry, what happened? But I picked up on it because the script made it clear enough. But the art, I'm like, oh my god, what are you doing? I, it's not good at all. And it's really infuriating because it is such a good script. This is such a good retelling. And it, ta and it does not leave anything any of the iconography behind. I mentioned, you know, they managed to work in Superman smashing the, the car into the rock like the original cover of the very first issue of Action Comics. They, hell, by 2004, phone booths were a complete and utter anachronism. They still find a way to have a nod to the changing in a phone booth without having a phone booth there because there wouldn't have been in a major metropolitan city at that point in time. So these things are there and we get the little nods, the acknowledgements. There's a lot of really interesting amounts of detail put into how Clark, you know, studies acting, you know, to slouch and you know, really not be noticed. And, you know, the, the whole thing with the glasses, there's actually a wonderful little line because Ma Kent puts the glasses on him to dull the color of his eyes. She's like, you have some of the most brilliantly blue eyes that have ever existed anywhere. They are striking and they are memorable here puts these incredibly strong prescription glasses on him and they dull the eye color a little bit. It's just these little acknowledgements of the things that we know are iconic to Superman, like the glasses, like the slouch, like the phone booth, like the carvings, and so many more things that I can even think to say. They're here and in a way that is sort of acknowledging that they need a little bit more explanation than they would have when they were first introduced, but still recognizing the iconography of it, never making fun of it, never being like, isn't that stupid? It's a perfect level of, of reverence for the history and the prestige of the character and everything that he is and has been and has stood for. It's such a good script and I wish, God, I wish the art didn't suck. Ugh. So that's Superman Birthright. I do still recommend it for the script alone, but dear God. It's not the worst art I've ever dealt with. Like, I, I, I was buying comics in the 90s. I've seen worse art than this. Again, it's just the disconnect of how good the script is. Hey. <laughs> So that's Superman Birthright. Have you read this? What did you think about it? If you haven't read it, do you personally have a favorite take on the origin of Superman? It can be from the comics. It can be from any movie or uh, television interpretation. Whatever is your favorite, drop something on down in the comments. Let's talk about it. A bunch of stuff to do. Like, subscribe, Patreon. It's how this review got sponsored. Um, plus, it's my birthday this month, so I've got my wish list in the uh, description down there. All that stuff, but you also don't have to do any of it, because end of the day, folks, you're the council. I'm just running the meetings. And until next time, this council is adjourned.